Hey folks, I am the Not-So-Evil Evil Viking 13, and I am finally back after traveling to London, England last week to compete in the Battlefield 4 Showdown Live, kind of a second revolution if you will. After helping the USA team get a 3-0 victory, I'm back home and ready to get back into Empire Total War. We're here in the American Republic series where I'm playing kind of an alternate version, uh, alternate history of the USA. Our current year is 1796, and we have just had an election. Let's go back to the States, all the way from jolly old England. Okay. Following a free and fair election, the current cabinet has regained control of the government. And it looks like we have some decently high level guys here in our cabinet. Our treasury secretary is incredibly high ranked. Uh, Secretary of State and Naval Secretary, just kind of average. This year, the smallpox vaccination was actually invented as well. I do love those little history blurbs. And we have a ton of roads finished all across the Republic here. And recruitment. New York and New England. It's been so long. What were those guys up to? I think it was just to have an army here Men in New York. Forward. Oh, that's right. We were actually marching on the Iroquois territory back here. Sir. Okay. See, we just had an election. Let's take a closer look at our cabinet. Our president is Orville Talbot. Decent skills. Um, negative 4% bonus to global tax income. Hmm. It appears that he is leeching a bit of our tax money off. That sucks. Nothing much we can do about that. We can, however, attempt to replace our Secretary of State. And there we go. A few 2% bonuses there on our new one. Clipsaby Cockburn. Alrighty. <laughs> I believe that in the last episode, we did defeat the Cherokee. Yes, we do own the Cherokee territory. And awkwardly, Spain controls the Kaintuck territory. They bought it from the... Uh, from the Cherokee just before I defeated their last province. So let's see if Spain is willing to sell this currently worthless territory. We do only have 3,000 gold to offer though. That's not, not a great offer at all. They did think about it there for a second. So if we could get some more cash together that could actually work. It looks like all of our gold plus some this turn is going to just replenishing this army that had that really intense fight against the Cherokee. We're gonna leave some of these native buildings like the, uh, the Weaver's Lodge and I believe the Gunsmith, yeah. Oh, actually we can't do the Gunsmith because it's going to convert the population to animism. Fortunately not worth it, so we're gonna bulldoze that and build a governor's mansion for the region instead. I was hoping that the Iroquois were gonna move south and capture this territory so we could just take it and not have to buy it from Spain, but they're just kind of sitting there. It's a small native army, but the Spanish have nothing on this territory at all is an Iroquois raiding party off here in the west attacking Louisiana which the French are currently holding but the French have a really big army here those are actually line infantry not militia for the most part there's only yeah one unit of militia that's all line infantry a very powerful army speaking of armies one of our best armies here is uh, 
stuck in Georgia. We got tons of Continental Marines and other advanced units. They were flanking around to attack the Cherokee territory, but we just went right for the jugular with our other army from, uh, I believe it was the Carolinas, and just took them out. So this army is kind of stuck awkwardly out here now. I don't think we can advance into the Spanish territory, so we're just going to... Hmm, where can we go with this? I'm going to just bring it north for now, because... I'm not going to help the French out here in the west, because I'm really hoping that the Iroquois move west with bigger armies and do some serious damage so that I can just take over the territories from them without having to buy them from the Iroquois themselves. Or from uh, from France themselves. Easier to conquer than purchase. Well, we do have this army here in Williamsburg that's pretty massive. You know, I wonder... We still are at war with the Dutch. You know what? I may send this army from Virginia to conquer... Punda. This Dutch colony here in the south. I am trying to avoid foreign wars, so I will give them one more chance at peace. Request a peace treaty. They are demanding a territory, the Confederation of New England, in order to have a peace treaty. Definitely not. So, that kind of seals that colony's fate. This navy has the USS Constitution, the Enterprise, and the Republic. I'm going to bring that navy up here to Yorktown. Load our army. And we can actually, it appears, invade immediately. Our navy has a very, very large movement range. So let's just go right in there. Are there two Dutch territories? There are two Dutch colonies. And, you know, selling those might actually give us some leverage with some of the actual territories that we want. Let's see how the invasion goes. Ooh. A very large army here in this Dutch colony. Line infantry, cannons, militia, wow. So we are in for a very serious fight. I might actually attempt to land these troops. Let's see. Can we land over here, perhaps? Set Setting up there we go. Jump to it and look so our army is deployed there. We'll see how that invasion goes. That does leave Virginia a bit open to attack. But the Iroquois seem to be on the retreat here having awkwardly lost this territory to Denmark over here somehow, I still have not figured that one out. Let's check on our technology. Currently researching the wealth of nations. How is our income looking for next turn? Almost 4,000, so our economy is growing. Let's add a bit more replenishment for these troops. Clear out the rest of our gold. And we're going to go ahead and attack Cayuga in the Iroquois territory and attempt to take that entire region out. It's going to be a very pitched battle here. They have some elite infantry, including medicine men, musket men, Native American warriors. Let's give it a shot. And here we are for the Battle of the Iroquois Territory. We have a few 12-pounders for our cannons. And a decent field of view for them. A few hills there. I think I'm actually going to push this one up after we start the battle to crest this hill right here. 
Our second cannon's going to go down. Yeah. We'll go down here. More line infantry over here on the left, along with some grenadiers and some militia, and some light infantry to mix things up with some ranged weapons there. A bit more militia and minutemen, and we'll supplant them with some grenadiers right there on the flank. Get our general back in the woods here. Got one cavalry on the left there. Dragoons on the right flank. With our regiment of horse. Pretty straightforward. There's that hilltop. Shoot right up there. This cannon down here. See your troop movements right there, you just hold down the space bar. You can see where everybody's going. Ooh, a line of horsemen has just emerged out of the tree line here. Native American Lancers. We need to get those cannons up quickly. Let's have you guys run into place here. Focus our cannon fire on the horses first. Try to get some good bounce through with our round shot. And here's the first cavalry charge. And they have stopped. Let's have both cannons work those guys over. A terrible shot. They just overshot all of them. Not a single hit from both batteries of cannons. Terrible accuracy. This is a very new army, so they are not experienced. But still, really, what is that? A few hundred yards tops? Could have almost just thrown the cannonballs at them. Two more misses. And three more misses. I am going to hold the line because we do have the advantage of having artillery. Don't want to press too hard. Not make use of that advantage. There's an accidental cannon hit on something here. Something hidden in the woods. Probably medicine men, I think. There's going to be a whole bunch of hidden units that we can't see yet. All in these tree lines. Just waiting for us.
more terrible shots from our cannon. If I were this army, I would be laughing so hard right now. Giant army, two batteries of cannons, only one accidental hit so far. Swing and a miss. Swing and a miss. Multiple misses. Oh, that's terrible. I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward, just because this is taking forever. Another accidental hit here in the center. And that has caused them to advance. Let's get our cannons over to canister shot. First rounds go out. Excellent, excellent hits finally. Hard to miss with the equivalent of 12 pounds of buckshot. As expected, they are going in for the charge immediately. Let's shift our lines around like this. And they're going for a cavalry charge there. And let's pull these cavalry back. Move this line of tree over to reinforce. Whoa. Into the breach they go. They're hitting our lines very, very hard here in the center. Warrior Society and Armed Tribesmen doing some damage. Our line infantry is getting hit quite hard, but holding the line. Grenadiers in hand to hand combat here on the right flank. About to be backed up by our dragoons. Canister shot is doing really, really well for us. Let's close this noose. Here come some arrows from the Iroquois forces. I'm gonna pull this militia back and replace them with line infantry. Some 
fresh troops for him. Here, have some more canister shots. That we have some fresh troops here. To fill the gap in our lines. Right in the back. Our left flank is closed in nicely. Whoa, hidden units here on the left. Let's pull that cavalry back. And they got hit. It's going to be American warriors and medicine men. Not good at all. Let's pull this left flank around to assist. Although they are pretty much done for our regiment of horse. The 5th Regiment, Provincial Cavalry, is gone. They are in full route. Now form these guys up here on the left as quickly as possible. Get these lines turned around. There go the last musket men on the right flank. Our cannons have definitely ranked up after many, many kills. Get a V formation going here. Alright, cannons, do your thing. And they are wavering and panicking already. And just as the charge reached my cannons, they rout. And our light infantry here is doing well against their lancers with their long range rifles. Beginning to pick them off one by one. And that's going to leave our remaining cavalry free to engage those lancers. Ah, oh, they are coming back. The medicine men have regrouped. There's some more canister shot for them. That last canister shot missed by just a bit. But they're getting absolutely destroyed by this V formation. They can't regroup long enough to actually get in close enough to engage. I believe the medicine men are just armed with tomahawks. Yes, they're very high ranked warriors, but just tomahawks, not any kind of ranged weapons. Similar fashion, Native American warriors, some kind of tomahawk or uh, axe like weapon there. Not going to be able to do a whole lot. And there's a good hit with the canister shot, followed by my infantry.
And they are broken once again. I'm gonna pull this infantry slowly up once again. And let's move these cannons up as well. Push hard and end this. Now the Lancers are kind of hiding back here. And the balance of power bar is still showing a good bit of red, so I'm concerned that somewhere else out here there is still some hidden native units. And here is our advance. We'll fast forward just a bit. And we have shots fired from the tree line. A hidden unit of musket men, actually. That was unexpected. So this left flank, I'm going to have them pull up to right here instead. And there are the musket men. About to meet a lot of red, white, and blue. <laughs> After a reload. Good first volley. Good second volley. Cavalry is attempting to flank. Good hits. Good hits overall. Going to deploy some pikes. And send in our cavalry. Militia's working on them there too. Square formation. For the line infantry. And our light infantry is doing the job. There's some bowmen back there, finally revealing themselves. And some more musketman shots here. So let's get our guys back in line. And we'll keep pressing the engagement. So we try to draw this battle to a close here. Looks like they're kind of trying to rally here in the village. Cannons are back online here in the tree line. Firing into the woods. No hits yet. The 
the musket men that came back did not even get a shot off. Time for the canister shot. And there we go. Good hits. And they are now trapped once again within the V formation. And they are shattered. That will be our last enemy unit, which we will continue to run down. Just have our cannons hold fire and do a bit of mop up. Despite deploying very similar armies as far as numbers go, we only lost about 738. They lost their entire army of 3,333. Quite a few rank ups as well. That canister shot on our cannons was just absolutely devastating. We have 172 for our kills for the first cannon, and 155 for the second, with one rank up there. After that initial period of misses with a the round shot, they really made up for it with those those canister shot rounds. That that just really cut through those native lines as they charged in to go hand to hand. Grenadiers and cavalry doing really well as well. I would call that a very successful battle. And we have now gained the Iroquois territory. Going to bulldoze the gunsmith. And the communal farms. Going to leave the weaver's lodge. and also remove the meeting lodge and let's get rid of these farms as well we'll replace them with actual uh, colonial style farms that is it for a very eventful 1776 that really boosted our income for next turn about uh, 1400 gold at least a thousand gold Let's end our turn and see what happens next. The Dutch have ambushed our navy here in uh, one of the trading regions, uh, the Straits of Madagascar. They have a very elite and good sized fleet, but it's pretty damaged it looks like. A lot of their cannons are missing. I am going to attempt to retreat as far as possible, but they are going to press the engagement. We have the Ranger, a fourth rate ship of the line. The Diligent, a bomb ship with a mortar attached right there on the front. And the Acteon, our Admiral's flagship. Very small navy. But if these guys are damaged enough, it might be enough. Let's see what the Dutch are deploying back here. We do have a lot of flutes, which are basically armed trade ships. Decently staffed and decently armed trade ships. Fourth rate. Fourth rate. Fourth rate. Fourth rate. These guys are somewhat damaged, but they have enough hull strength left 
to do quite a bit of damage with their Armenian cannons. It's not looking too great for America here in the Straits of Madagascar. fast forward as they advance. They of course also have the wind completely to their advantage. I am sailing into the wind 100% almost. My bomb ship is just barely moving even on fast forward. So we're outnumbered, outgunned, and more or less dead in the water. This can only end well for us. I am going to duck my bomb catch right there back behind my other forces if possible. Let's see if we can catch enough wind to just get back there. Let's go ahead and see if we can hit it. drop anchor and just use these ships as basically stationary cannon platforms. There's really nowhere for this poor guy to run. So let's hope he can get some shots off as quickly as possible. Quite a fleet they have here. Not sure why this bomb ship is not engaging yet. And a light hit on us. There we go. So much cannon fire. There's some explosive shells there from our bomb ship.
direct hit there on the Schoonord. One of those shells from the bomb catch. Bomb catch, I think. That's how you see that. I turn the Ranger's stronger side. The less amount of holding edge towards the enemy. Try and buy some time to get more of these shells off from the bomb catch. Got a few shells. Excellent hits on the wind hond. And we are on fire over here at the Ranger. We're going to have them drop anchor. Put that fire out. And the ranger is routing. Diligent is just charging in there. We got some mortar shells. We're gonna fall a bit short of the Gelderland. As they sail way too close there. The Ranger has just surrendered, and I believe it is sinking. fire from every direction. And we have lost our Admiral on the Ranger. So it looks like while we're fighting the Iroquois, we're going to want to be really building up a good-sized navy to go out and sail against the Dutch in these trading territories. If they want to continue this random war, then we're going to have a serious fight on our hands. But we're going to come back, and we're going to remember this battle. We're definitely going to get our revenge. Diligent is routing, and they have surrendered. After taking pretty massive hits right there. their Briggs is actually attempting to board. We'll give them a broadside right there. Devastating broadside. That was excellent. And they are now routing. We killed a bunch of their crew with that broadside. That will teach them to just pony up next to us and attempt to board with no warning. definitely going to lose this fight, but we have caused significant damage to their fleet. 
which was already pretty damaged. And we are routing. That's going to do it for this battle. A close defeat. We put up a good fight. Admiral John Barry goes down with his fleet. The French are doing quite well with defending Louisiana. Really impressive, actually. But the Iroquois are responding. The significant show of force there, heading towards Louisiana. And now we find ourselves in the winter of 1796. Going to begin the turn by asking Spain for the territory once again. The Kaintuck territory. And we have about 4,500 gold to offer this time. They're still thinking about it, but no go yet. Trait gained for our treasury secretary, I think. Plus 4% bonus to global tax income, but minus 2% happiness for the lower classes. That leaves only the Confederation of New England getting kind of close to unhappiness. Admiral John Barry dies a heroic death off of Madagascar, and his fleet is destroyed. I'm not sure why, but we're estimating 10,000 income for next turn. Huh. In the meantime, let's get these magistrates going on our new territories and replenish these armies. Facts are my currency. Orders, Captain. This navy is going to remain off the coast of New York to guard our coast. Down here in the Dutch colonies, they have actually recruited a bunch more troops. Shape and Bristol fashion, Captain. Tell you what. See, we really can't take this territory yet. Let's load back up. Set sail. Waiting for your order. Where to, Captain? And check out. Their second colony over here. Ah, it's very lightly defended. We're going to land at their harbor, actually. Disembark and take their capital as revenge for that naval engagement. Just going to auto resolve it. Our general gained a plus one morale trait, a second plus one morale trait. And we have captured the region, giving us a nice boost in our income. 2,000 extra gold right there. Going to going to take replenishment off of a few of these troops so we can actually repair that dockyard. 
It's going to cost a thousand. Wow. There we go. That gets our estimated income for next turn up to almost 13,000. And that's going to be it for this episode. I'll see you guys next time.